Today I'm going to talk about the spring pendulum with double mass. So there's a normal pendulum with a mass M1 and on the shaft of the pendulum there's a spring and an extra mass and that mass can move up and down along the shaft. So the pendulum can go left and right in a flat plane type of fashion and M2 can go up and down and then obviously also left and right okay so I'm gonna try to solve this system using Lagrangians and the first step we need to do is when we do that is we need to find out what the generalized coordinates are and I've, I kind of indicated this already there's two generalized coordinates one is the X which gives the movement of M2 up and down along the shaft of M1 and then the second generalized coordinate is theta which let it move in a plane from left to right okay so the generalized coordinates are x and theta and the infinitesimal movements associated with those generalized coordinates are delta x and delta theta we don't have any generalized forces so they will all be zero there's no non-conservative force in the system yeah, there are no uh, dampening systems in there, so all generalized forces as a consequence are zero. So now the next step, once we determine our generalized coordinates, is to set up the Lagrangian. And the Lagrangian is a combination of kinetic energy and potential energy, what you see over here, T minus V. So we start with kinetic, uh, the kinetic energy terms, T. And there are, in the system, there are two kinetic energy terms. One that's associated with M1 and the other that's associated with M2. Okay. Let's start with the simple one, M1, because that can only go left and right. And that's the same as a half mv squared. And V in this case is L theta dot. Okay. And you have to quadratize that and so you get your kinetic energy which is a half m1 l squared theta dot squared okay so now let's try to find the kinetic energy of m2 and m2 has the ability to go up and down and rock back and forth so it's a combination of two things so let's first see what the position of m2 is xt and the position of m2 compared to this point here can be written as xt cosine theta comma xt sine theta so this is a factor in the x direction and in the y direction okay and you see that both x and theta are depending on t so once you differentiate to get the speed you have to differentiate to both x and to theta we do that here so x dot is x dot cosine theta so first you differentiate towards the first component use the product rule and then you differentiate towards theta which is minus sine theta times d theta dt over here, theta dot. Okay, and we do the same here with x sine theta. So first we differentiate towards x, which gives you x dot sine theta, and then you leave x alone and you differentiate sine uh, theta towards t, which gives you cosine theta d theta dt, which is theta dot here. Okay, so now we can quantize this because this is the speed term. So again, we go a half m2 v squared, which is a half m2 x dot times x dot. And we work out this form times itself. So you quadratize this one with itself. You quadratize that one with itself. You work that all out. You get all these terms here. And there's a lot of stuff that will disappear. Luckily, the two difficult ones, like this one and this one, disappear. Because there's a minus and a plus. They go away x dot squared has a cosine and a sine squared so that gives you x dot squared here and then there's an x squared theta dot squared with a sine and a cosine variant so that gives you the x squared theta dot squared over here so now we have all the kinetic terms uh, together so we have two terms you add them up and you have the total kinetic energy of the system so now let's work on the potential energy of the system. 
there are three different potential energies in the system. The spring has potential energy, M1 has potential energy, if it goes up the potential energy becomes a little bit less, and so for M2, if the, if the pendulum goes up a little bit, the potential energy will reduce a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at the terms, the potential energy terms. Let's start with M1, and that's then M1 times G times L times cosine theta. And L cosine theta is the length to where the pendulum is at that point in time. So if it's standing here, for instance, with this theta, you will get L cosine theta, okay? And this is our zero point, so you need to have a minus here. Same for M2, it's so exactly the same term, but instead of L you use X, because that's the generalized coordinate for the location of M2. And then according to Hooke's law, of course, there's a potential term with respect to the spring, which is a half K X squared. And X is really the differential um, of the length that's going to be induced by the system. So it's X minus L0 squared. L0 is the length. If you have the system in equilibrium, the spring sags due to gravity and it sags at a certain location. That location is L0. So at point T is 0, if you don't do anything, X will be exactly L0 and this will be 0. Okay? And once you start to modulate the system, then X will vary with respect to L0 and you get a certain delta. Yeah, you get either compression or relaxation of your spring here. Okay, so now we have our T, the kinetic energy terms. We have the potential energy terms. You can subtract them. So your Lagrangian is now T minus V. You subtract this, this one from this one, and you get this. You work it out, and you get this. Yeah, it's very straightforward, just a little algebra. There's nothing hard or intricate about this. So this is then your Lagrangian term. So now we are in a position to calculate the equations of motion. And we're going to do that next. So for clarity, I copied the Lagrangian. And we're going to use the Lagrangian's equations for that. We have two generalized constants. We have x and theta. So there will be two equations of motion. There were no generalized forces. So both generalized forces will be zero. And you see that over here. On the right hand side they're both zero on the left hand side we have to work it out so let's start with x so we differentiate the lagrangian with respect to x dot if you do that there's only one x dot in here so you differentiate this term and you get m2 x dot now you have to differentiate that towards t and you get m2 x double dot over here okay there's nothing else there, so now we move on with uh, differentiation with respect to x of the Lagrangian. So we do that. There's a term here. So if you differentiate this with respect to x, you get m2 x theta dot squared. That's this one with the minus from here. If you take this term and you differentiate it with respect to x, you get this term also with a minus. And if you differentiate this one, you get this term. There's a minus, there's a minus there, so you get a plus, and you get 2k kappa x minus l0, okay? And you see that term over here. Now you do something similar for theta, and that gives you the second equation of motion. So now we have two equations of motion, right? And those equations of motion you can do various things with. You can say, okay, I'm going to linearize them as a first step. You could do that. And I've done that in different videos, and you should check that out, how that works. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to throw it into Mathematica and simulate it and see what happens for various values of k. So if I have a somewhat loosey spring, and I, if I have a much tighter spring, what will be the difference in dynamic behavior? And that's what we're going to analyze next. Okay. So for clarity, the equations of motion are reproduced here again. And I threw these two equations into Mathematica. And I also threw four initial conditions into Mathematica. And the only initial condition that is unequal to zero is the amount, the perturbation of M1 over a, an initial theta. And that's what I do there. 
and then I see what happens. So I pull this one up and then I let the system go and then I see what happens. Then this will start to go back and forth and this will start to go up and down. Okay. And all the other ones I made zero. So I made the position of X at zero, zero. I made the speed of this one at zero. I made that zero. Um, I made the, uh, the speed of this one at zero, zero. But I only made the displacement of this M, so this theta at T is zero. I gave that a perturbation and let that go. I also assumed a number of values for the various parameters. So for M1 I used one kilogram, for M2 I used 0.1 kilogram, so much smaller than, an order of magnitude smaller than this one. I used G is 10 for G, so I used 10 for that. You can use 9.81 if you want, I used 10. Uh, the L, the length of the pendulum is 4.5 meters. I used L0, which is the sagging uh, distance in equilibrium. I used that in, of 25 centimeters, so it's very short. So this is definitely not at scale, right? And I used two values of K. K is one on the left hand side and K is 10 on the right hand side. Okay, and let's see what happens. If K is one, it's a very loose type of spring. Yeah, so there's, there could be lots of interaction between the up and down movement of M2 and the back and forth movement of M1. And you see that here. So this thing that modulates up and down is X. So that's M2's location, so to say, right? That's the top one. And the bottom one here, which is almost like a cosine type of wave, not quite, but almost, you can see here that it's shying away a little bit from a straight line here and also in these pieces. So it's not really a cosine, but almost. You, so you can see that there is some interaction between this system and this system, yeah? But here it's very pronounced, right? So for a not so strong spring with a small, relatively small K value, you see that there's a lot of modulation between uh, the amplitude here. The amplitude modulate, modulates quite a bit. What you can also see here, if you are, if the if M1 is swinging back and forth, and you are at the bottom here, yeah, you have your theta equals zero, but your speed is maximum of M1. And if your theta is zero here, you can see that you are always at the top here also, at the top here, at the top, you're also always at the top of the amplitude on X. And the reason for that is if the speed is maximum here, you go down into your swing, the speed is maximum, the centrifugal force is maximum. So there will be the most pull on that spring here. So the, the amplitude will be the biggest, relatively speaking, okay? So that's, that's something you can see here. And you see the modulation, so you see the interaction here. If you go to a much tighter spring with K is 10, so now the spring is very strong and it takes quite a bit of force to actually move M2. And you can see that there's not so much modulation here. It's fairly straight. It almost looks like a sign, right? Not quite, but almost. This definitely, so the one, the theta one, which is the big one here, that definitely looks like a cosine, right? So you can see if K goes up in value, that there is more decoupling between this system and this system. So you almost have two independent systems, right? So I think that's very cool. And I also think this is a great place to stop. So if you like this video, please subscribe and please like, and I'll see you in the next.